The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. It's time to give God the hurts of your past and let Him give you the healing and restoration you're longing for. Joyce's classic book, Beauty for Ashes, will help guide you to receive God's freedom and peace. Beauty for Ashes, available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. First Corinthians 9, 19. For although I'm free in every way from anyone's control, wow, the apostle Paul said, for although I am free in every way from anyone's control, hallelujah, for although I am free in every way from anyone's control, I have made myself a bond servant to everyone so that I might gain the more for Christ. You know what he's saying? I am free, Jesus has set me free, and I do not have to be controlled by anybody, but because I understand that freedom, I am free now to make myself a servant because I'm willing to do whatever is gonna work out the best in order for these people to be led to Christ. That's a wonderful scripture. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Everything is permissible, allowable, and lawful for me. See, Paul knew he was free from the law. But not all things are helpful and good for me to do. Expedient and profitable when considered with other things. Everything is lawful for me, but I will not become the slave of anything or be brought under its power. Wow. Paul was making an announcement. And if you have addictions in your life, even if you have some kind of substance addiction or an eating disorder, you should get up every day and declare loudly, sin is not my master and I will not be brought under the power of anything. <laughs> now here's the mistake that we make. We wanna wait until we see that happening before we will declare that it's a truth. Well, how can I say I'm free when I'm obviously not? Because God says you are. The devil says you're in bondage. God says you're free. If you agree with the devil, you'll keep getting more of what you got. I have no self-control. I have no discipline. I'm in bondage. <laughs> I'm just in such bondage. Oh, I'm in bondage. I'll never get over my past. I'm in such bondage. I'm addicted, I'm addicted, I'm addicted, I'm addicted. <laughs> you know what? When I used to smoke cigarettes and I really wanted to quit, I would drive down the highway smoking my cigarette saying, I can't stand to smoke, don't like to smoke, don't want to smoke. I quit smoking. And the thing that's very beautiful about this is I didn't know what I'm teaching you now. It was something I felt like God led me to do. And within two weeks, I had quit. And I had tried for years prior to that. I'm telling you, you got to start agreeing with God. Stop saying I'm in bondage and start saying I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free. Come on, that'll do you a lot of good. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But like a boxer, I buffet my body. I discipline it. I subdue it. And I love this. For fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved, rejected as a counterfeit. And we have such a problem with that in the church today. We preach to everybody. But where's our witness? Types of addictive behaviors. Alcohol, drugs, we get that. Food becomes a big problem for a lot of people. They don't feel good about themselves and so they eat for comfort. Eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, 
one people starve themselves the other they binge and eat way more than any person could eat and then go make themselves throw up these are dangerous disorders and in all probability we have some people right in this room today that are dealing with these same kinds of things I have one girl tell me that she after many years of treatment and no help she bought my battlefield of the mind book and she said when I had the urge to go throw up I would kneel down in front of that toilet that was stealing my life and read that battlefield of the mind book out loud and she got completely set free you see if you think you have to stay in bondage all your life if you think you can't control it where the mind goes the man follows our emotions get all involved in this and God doesn't want us to have broken hearts and wounded emotions and messed up personalities he wants us to know who we are in Christ to know that the fruit of the Spirit in us, to know that God loves us unconditionally. And yes, we don't have it all together, and we are imperfect, but we are just the ones that Jesus died for. They say that in some private affluent schools, that this anorexia thing is an absolute epidemic. Because many of these children come from very affluent families who instead of taking time to love their children and invest in their lives, they buy them everything they want. We're in dangerous times because everybody is busy, 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 busy. I remember when life wasn't like it is now. I've been around a while. I remember when we had a phone in our home that four other families used it was a party line a four-way party line <laughs> and when you picked the phone up if somebody was on it you just had to wait till they got off my gosh now if we're in an area for two minutes where we can't get a cell phone signal <laughs> you would think the world was coming to an end this stupid highway every time I go through this area I cannot make my phone calls I remember when if you're out in a car and you wanted to make a phone call, you had to pull over to the side of the road and find a pay phone. People used to give their children time, now they give them money. Electronics. <laughs> Just a word of caution. Your kids want you more than they want what you can buy for them. There are even feeling addictions. People get addicted to certain kinds of feeling, like excitement. They can't deal with ordinary, plain, everyday life, Monday through Friday. Religious righteousness. There are people who are so wounded inside and they feel so worthless. And man, when they get a little bit of religion, now following all the rules and regulations is how they find their worth and value and they become the most obnoxious people on the planet and if you are one get over it I was one I'm telling you what I would have made a chief Pharisee if the Holy Ghost wouldn't have got a hold of me because I was so proud of all the things that I did right and so looked down on people who didn't do what I did. <laughs> I fasted, I prayed. Come on. There's so many things that people can get addicted to. Some people punish themselves for the way they feel about themselves by feeling guilty all the time. That was me. I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. My guilt was my self-punishment. Some people are joy addicts. They have a continual frozen smile on their face. <laughs> they never have a bad day. They never have a problem. They're just happy in Jesus. <laughs> and you look at them and you think, man, my guts are falling out. You can't be real. 
And then there are thought addictions. Worrying all the time. How many of you just worry, 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 worry? You are wasting your time. But people say, well, you got to worry about your kids. You're not a good parent if you don't worry about your kids. Now, where can you find that in the Bible? <laughs> Detailing. Excessive planning. Yes, there's nothing wrong with having a plan, but God's got a better plan than we do. So you're kind of wasting your time planning too far in the future. What we need is not a plan. We need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Have a plan, but get out of God's way if he's got another plan. People get addicted to pornography, another mind addiction. I was addicted to reasoning. I had to have everything figured out or I couldn't be still. Now, people get kind of weird about the word addiction. I wrote a book called Approval Addiction, and it did good, but it didn't do nearly as good as I would have liked it to have done, and I realized after it was because of the word addiction. People don't want to think they're addicted to anything, even if they are. What is approval addiction? It means you can't settle down and feel happy if you don't feel like that everybody approves of you. What is a reasoning addiction? It means that you cannot settle down. You cannot have peace unless you think you've got it all figured out. Come on. Anybody else got a reasoning addiction? All right. How about an approval addiction? Mm -hmm. We've got a few honest people here, but... There's some that haven't caught up yet. How about an activity addiction? Cannot be still. I happen to understand that one. I have to be very careful too. I like to keep it moving. <laughs> I mean, we see it on television. They've got a whole program now about people who hoard things. There's another program about people who have excessive numbers of pets. There's gambling addictions and exercising addictions and just all kinds of things. Well, what are people trying to do? They're trying to feel good about themselves. They're trying to find something to latch on to, to say, I have worth and value now because I own all this stuff. I'm okay, I've got it all together because I know what's gonna happen. I've got a plan. I'm excited. I'm happy. Look how happy I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm happy. I get suspicious of people like that. <laughs> Some people have an addiction to feeling important. And they will do everything that they can possibly do to feel important. I get concerned when we hire a new employee and the first thing they want to know is what's their title going to be. Sometimes I think, uh-oh, gonna have to work through this. So you can keep dancing around this thing, whatever it is, bad temper, hard to get along with, self-pity, depression, excessive mental activity, not being able to rest, being a workaholic, whatever it is. One woman went to our pastor. She said, Pastor, I'm getting married next week for the seventh time. I want you to pray that this man is going to treat me right. <laughs> that is deception to the max. Because out of all seven marriages, she was the only common denominator in all of them. Now, God loves you. And he loves you not because you're lovable, because in fact, we are not. He loves us because he wants to.